Hey there, how's it going? Ludum Dare just wrapped up recently, and of course I took part. I know we have a joke around here about me having a game jam problem, but I did take a month or so off because I did in fact burn myself out. I still have a video to make about that, but I haven't really found the right way to talk about it yet. Long story short, I overextended myself because game jams were my thing, and people wanted to see videos of them, so I did more and more when I wasn't really enjoying it. Which of course led me to making games that I just wasn't really happy with. And to be honest, after a couple of successive game jams where I didn't do very well and I wasn't enjoying them very much, it really zapped my confidence that I could make something fun. So after a bit of a break and running my own game jam, which was absolutely amazing, I jumped back into the mix with one goal. To make something small and enjoyable so I'm not panicking to finish at the very end. This is made even tougher on me since when I take part in Ludum Dare, I participate in the compo. Real quick before I get ahead of myself, for those that don't know or would like a refresher, Ludum Dare is one of the largest online game jams which takes place twice a year. There are two categories that can be entered. The Jam, where participants have 72 hours to make a game using a theme that's revealed at the start of the competition. You're allowed to work solo or in teams and use any assets you have the legal rights to use. Running alongside that is Compo, which is described as Ludum Dare Hard Mode. Participants only receive 48 hours to make their game using the theme, but they must work alone, all assets and code must be made during the 48 hours, and the source code needs to be posted along with the finished game. Why do I love this sort of challenge so much? No clue, but we're doing it, and I need to keep my scope in check this time. Even before the jam started, I had a game mechanic that I really wanted to explore. A while back, I did a 3 hour design challenge on my stream where I made a game that combined Portal, Pong, and Breakout. It's like a single player Pong experience where you control both paddles, the left with W and S, and the right with the up and down arrow keys. Now for some people that would be tough enough, but then I went ahead and made the paddles into portals. Which when colliding with the paddle instead of bouncing would teleport to the other side. It just feels weird and takes a minute to get your head around, but I still really like it. I added breakable blocks that will return after a few seconds, and when hit, they add to your score. And I really think it's a successful little prototype. I frequently revisit these 3-hour prototypes as bases for other game jams, and this one's been sitting in the back of my head for about a year now. I think it's an interesting design, and it's a small enough concept that I really think I could make something with it in 48 hours. But of course, that's all entirely dependent on the theme. The Ludum Dare themes have become kind of a meme in the Game Jam community for always just being terrible. Now, I don't think all the Ludum Dare themes have been horrible, but for the most part, historically, they have not been my favorite most of the time. The themes are suggested and voted on by the community, and I was hopeful for a few of the options in the final round of voting. Then, I was on a call with some other game devs for the theme reveal, and well... Yeah, maybe oh, I was... The theme? Unstable! Oh, man. It's unstable? It's unstable? Yeah, it's unstable. Is it? Oh yeah. no! Oh, oh, I hated that theme! Uh, that was like the one that I least wanted to get picked. Hey, Darn. I'm stable. Of course. Now, if you like this theme, that's totally fine. I'm not here to tell you that you're wrong. But personally, I really didn't like Unstable as an option. And I really didn't expect it to win, so I have to say it caught me a bit off guard. But of course, the point of a theme in a game jam is to make you think, and now I really had to. One of the unique things with Ludum Dare is before the jam starts, you know what all the possible themes are. So it's possible to sit down and concept some ideas for each of them, which I did a day or two ahead of time. But of course, because I didn't think Unstable would be anywhere near the top spot, I kind of half-heartedly wrote an idea that I just really didn't want to make. So it was back to the drawing board, and I kept coming back to this Portal Breakout Pong idea. Unfortunately, there really isn't much that's unstable about it. Then someone in my chat made a suggestion about possibly needing to knock over a structure in the middle of the playfield Angry Birds style. That mechanics idea clicked with me right away and I started concepting for what the game would be about. After a few ideas, I settled on aliens using portals to guide a comet to a structure to knock it down. I ended that brainstorming stream with a pretty good idea of what I wanted and it was time to get to work. Real fast, to answer a question that comes up quite a bit in the comments, I'm using an engine called Construct 3. In most of my videos, you'll see me using a theme to change the look of the engine called Pro CSS, which is made by Mitsu Ashish. But they recently released a new theme called Dar CSS and asked me if I'd like to give it a try. They were nice enough to send me a key to check it out, so this jam I'll be using it to see how I like it. There'll be a link in the description if you're a Construct user and this looks like something you'd enjoy. The build starts out pretty straightforward, getting paddles in and moving, which is simple enough. The ball was trickier than I expected though. Construct has a physics system which you can add to objects which gives them quote unquote realistic like physics. The objects will have gravity, mass, all that stuff which is great and exactly what I need for a physics-based destroy the tower type game. However, unlike Angry Birds, which uses a projectile to knock down its structures, this game's projectile will need to be like a Pong Ball. And the physics of a Pong Ball are about as realistic as the horse physics in Skyrim. 
This presents a problem for me. To make an object that can interact with the blocks of the tower, I need to give it the physics behavior. But doing so will give it weight and gravity, which I don't want to have on the ball. So I hacked an idea together using a bouncing bullet object that has a physics ball pinned to it at all times. I'm sure there are plenty of ways to do this differently, but this is a jam and it just needs to work, and this is working. And quite well for that matter also. With the ball figured out and being able to knock over objects, it's time to start turning the paddles into portals. Which really doesn't take much, when the ball collides with the paddle instead of bouncing, it just teleports itself to the other side and keeps moving. But after playing around with this for a bit, I was presented with a bit of a problem. The ball gets away from you and it doesn't really feel like you're controlling anything, as much as just chasing it around. Which after a bit of testing I found wasn't very fun. In the original 3 hour prototype, not being able to control the ball was kind of the point. The ball bounces around and you need to keep it in play. However, now we have a more focused objective to knock over a structure. This means that we need a way to control the ball a little bit more. I decided to add a catch area to the front of each paddle. When the player presses the spacebar, if the ball is over one of these areas, it will hold the ball in place. When the player releases, the ball will continue moving as it was. My original intention was for the ball to maintain its angle of movement when you let go, but I ran into a bug where every time I released the ball, it would reset its angle and just move horizontally. And after trying to get rid of it for a while and having to keep playtesting, I realized I actually kind of liked it. Catching and resetting the ball gave much needed control to the player and really added that bit of agency that seemed to be missing before. So I went in to fix the code and make sure that it worked this way intentionally. It's always joked about, but this is the literal interpretation of it's not a bug, it's a feature. So it can't be abused, I added an energy bar so the player would not be able to use it non-stop. Eventually the charges will run out and if you haven't cleared the level yet, you won't be able to reset the ball's position anymore. It adds a little bit of a strategy element to the game to not use up all of your charge too soon. But I did try to be fairly generous with it so it wasn't too hard, this is a game jam after all. Now we have the core mechanics in, but what is the objective? Just knocking down the blocks isn't really that riveting after all. In Angry Birds, you need to destroy the pigs in and around the structures. But I didn't really want to just copy and do that. I thought, what if there's an alien stuck under the structure that you need to knock it off of them to get them free? This would require the player to clear the area above them so they could be teleported to freedom. It was a little tedious trying to knock all of the blocks off the platform because sometimes the longer horizontal ones would just kind of get stuck sitting there. So I added health to each of the blocks, that way as the ball hit them, it ticked down and eventually they would get destroyed. This would give the player two options to clear the path, one knocking them off or destroying them outright. I did add in enemies to be kind of like pigs, and I figured they could be guards or teleporter jammers or something like that that needed to be destroyed along with clearing a path, to add a little bit more to the objective. So I added a trigger area above the goal, and if there's no enemies on the field and no blocks over it, you win. And that's the basic game loop. I spent the rest of Friday night doing the boring things like making menus and setting up level structures. Nothing that really makes for compelling video, so let's move on to the next day. Saturday, I got a really late start and didn't begin working until around 3pm. At this point, the game is basically together, now it's time to make it look more interesting than a bunch of rectangles on the screen. As always, I head over to lowspec.com to grab a color palette. This time, I'm using the Lux 2K palette by Lux. It's a really nice palette that has a variety of greens that I thought would be useful for the aliens. I made a rough size mock-up of the play area and the elements I'm going to need, and I started out by turning the ball into a comet. It was a good warm-up because the rock and fire doesn't need to be quite as exact, so it allows you to kind of play around a little bit and get a feel for it. I struggled a bit with the alien, wanting to make it cute, but not too generic. At one point, I gave it a nose, and we had an unexpected Shrek. I briefly considered reworking the idea to be a Shrek meme for internet points, but then I thought better of it. So I removed the nose and then spent way too long trying to figure out what the body was going to look like. But then I elected not to give them a body at all because I was struggling with it and just stuck them in a prison box with their heads sticking out. I then used the first alien to make two more that would be controlling the portals, because I thought it would be adorable and give some reason to why you're controlling these portals. Mechanically it's in no way needed, but look how adorable they are. I opted to make the blocks you knock over pretty plain for both time and clarity reasons. I'll be adding cracks later that go along with their damage values to show how close they are to breaking. The next several hours were spent creating animations, adding them into the game, and hooking them up to play when they should. This is never a quick process. Many hours later, around 11.30, I started on sound effects. Usually, I use sound effects and music that I purchased or downloaded, but that's not allowed for compo. Audio is one of my weakest skills, and one I don't enjoy doing quite as much, but it's gotta be done. 
So I used SFXR to make the various beeps, boops, zaps, and whatnot. And then it's time for what I dread absolutely most in compo. The music. I have no training and very little understanding of putting notes together in a pleasing way. It's just something I've never studied and I flounder every time I try to make something. So over the next couple hours I tried out several different music making tools, none of which I was able to make something I was happy with. The rules say you can use loops you didn't create to make a new piece out of them, which I thought was my ticket to making something. I found an app on my phone called Music Maker Jam, which is really user-friendly for laymans like me. But I have to say, it was an absolute nightmare to get the song off of my phone and onto my computer in a format I could play. I was eventually able to get it around 3am, and it was time to start making some levels, because the jam ends tomorrow at 3pm, so I gotta get going. I called it good around 5am with 8 levels, and I added a new block that can't be destroyed to add some extra challenge to the final stages. After some rest, I got back to it around 10.30am on Sunday, and all that's left is polish and menu art for the most part. Of course, saying that is easier said than done, polish does take a good amount of time. With compo ending at 3pm, I was feeling like I'm in a pretty good spot. I added a bunch of particles, made the UI and instructions, and did a lot of playtesting. I even had enough time to send it to a friend to have him playtest as well. Thank you to my buddy Gingerbeard4251 who tested the game and found a few issues that I had overlooked. The last several jams I've done, I've been still trying to get the game working in the hours before the submission. This was a really nice change of pace, I have to say. After the time limit is complete, Ludumdara gives you one extra hour to export and upload your game. And I did use most of this time to export my build, upload it, test it while it was uploaded, fix some bugs, re-export, re-upload, etc. But I was able to get a final build out and uploaded to itch and submitted with over 8 minutes to spare, which is a far cry better than last time. And with that, this is Portal Rescue. You play as two portal-wielding aliens trying to bust your buddy out of space jail. You can't just beam them out because there are jammers present and blocks above the prison. Use your portals to guide the comet into the unstable structure, destroying the jammers and clearing debris to rescue your friend. You can catch the comet with your alien tech and reset its angle and movement, but be careful. You only have a limited amount of energy, and when it's gone, the comet will do as it pleases. If the comet passes your portal three times on any given stage, you will lose and have to start the level over. I left all the levels unlocked and able to be selected even if you haven't completed the previous ones. For a game jam, I feel it's more important for a player to be able to see all of the content even if they struggle with one particular level. Plus, balance can be really hard to get right in a game jam, so if you accidentally make one level way too hard, you lock players off from being able to see the rest of the game. I'm really happy with the game, and even more glad I was able to scope more appropriately this jam than I have in recent times. The game has a really interesting concept, and I think it's a lot of fun. It's a bit brain burning trying to control both paddles while dealing with the comet passing through them instead of bouncing, so I don't know how well this would work as a larger game, but in the context of a game jam, I feel that I explored one way this idea could be used, and it's pretty fun. So far, I've had some great comments, and I couldn't be happier that people are enjoying it. If you'd like to try this game out for yourself, there's a link down in the description below. How this game will fare in ratings, I don't know. There were some incredible games submitted to this Ludum Dare. I spent a week after the jam playing and rating as many games as I could live on stream. And I have to say, playing game jam games is an absolutely great source of inspiration. I have lots of new ideas and I'm excited for the next one. So, that's my Ludum Dare 49 compo experience. I set out to make a small, underscoped game that I wouldn't be panicking to finish at the end, and I actually succeeded. I'm pretty proud of myself and this helps give me a level of confidence back that I had lost over the last few months. I really enjoyed the process of making, and I like the thing that I made. What could be better than that? Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And if you're feeling frisky, there's a bell you can ring as well. If you would like to chat with me, the best place is on my live stream at twitch.tv slash vimlark. We also have a Discord that's full of amazing people. While we're on the subject of amazing people, I would also like to thank all my Patreon supporters who help make these videos happen, especially my video producer tier patrons. Cinnabunny, Clone13. Cortland Massam, Curdle Games, Nightfall, It's Jeppy, Jed Jed, Kevin Haugau, Killboy Gaming, Cormai, Matsi Makes, Nazar Salim, Salty Pretzel, Scott Hansen, Soapy Gnome, Straight Up Gruntled, Warren Steven Rose, and Sangi Hai. You're all incredible people, and I cannot thank you enough for all of the support. Again, thank you all so much for watching, and I will talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.